what is the matter with him? I told him it wouldn't be funny, but no, 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 of course, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm no longer fun and interesting. What, just because I don't want to play some sick prank? <sighs> now, where did they set those bloody paint cans? <sighs> Here they are. Right, let's just get rid of this before any damage is done. <sighs> I swear. How can these jocks not pass a simple maths test but then come up with this? One of life's great mysteries, I suppose. Hmm? Is someone there? Brad? You better not be hiding up here. What did I say I would do if I found you up here manning this trap? It's not a funny prank, it's sick. And I told you that if I find you up here, I'm going to kick your ass. Oh. It's you. Uh, hi. Uh, sorry about the shouting. Thought you were someone else. I, 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 I've not seen you since the camp. How are you? How are you? You're crying. What happened? Are, are, are you okay? Are, are you hurt? Did, did Brad have anything to do with this? I swear to God, when I get my hands on that boy, I will. <clears throat> You're fine. You bloody liar. You're really not going to tell me, hmm? Alright. Fair enough. Well, I guess there's nothing else for it. What am I doing? Well, I'm, I'm sitting down, of course. Well, I thought the reason would be just as obvious. I'm not getting up until you tell me what's wrong. And don't bother trying to give me the silence treatment. I know fine and well from sitting around that campfire with you that you can talk about yourself perfectly fine. <laughs> it was hard enough trying to find a gap in you talking so I could go to bed. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I enjoy talking to you. I mean, I, I would like to think this is proof of that. You know, school being over and yet, here I am choosing to spend my free time with you. I mean, I suppose we didn't plan to be spending time together, but... Um, call it a happy accident. <laughs> Well, happy for me. I mean, for all I know, you could think I'm just another knucklehead. Another brainless ape on the football team. Though I'd like to think that from the fact you haven't ran or screamed or thrown something at me, that maybe you have a little bit more faith in me than that. <laughs> You know, when I said don't bother with the silent treatment, you weren't meant to take that as a challenge. I know it may not seem like it, but I do have stuff that I need to do today, outside of staring at this bit of wall. Don't get me wrong, it is a lovely bit of wall. Just, er, uh, not how I imagine spending my afternoon. Talking to a friend, however, that I have time for. Of course I think of you as a friend. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't spend long nights talking by a campfire with people I'm not at least a little bit friendly with. But then again, maybe you're just more tolerant than I am. One of your many good qualities, eh? Oh, 
Alright then. Well, if you're not going to give me any hints as to what's wrong, I'll just need to guess. I'll tell you what. Give me three guesses at what's wrong. If I'm wrong after the third one, I will leave you to wallow in self-pity. But if I'm right, you need to talk to me. Sound fair? Alright, um... Guess one is... You're sad because you failed a test. No, no. To be honest, that, that that was fairly stupid. I mean, you're smart. You never fail tests, but that's that that's my realm, and and and, and yeah. All right. If it wasn't a test, you're sad because one of the protagonists in your uh, cartoon shows that you watch, um, uh, yes. One of your anime protagonists has died, or something sad happened. That's why you're sad. No. Damn. Um. Really scratching my head here. Um. You're sad because my friends did something. Bloody knew it. You know, after we spoke at the campfire, I went back to talk to them. I really thought I'd gotten through to them. They said they'd back off, we focused more on the season and on improving our game. But then those damn cheerleaders got their claws in. Whispering, planning, putting ideas into their heads. Funnily enough, I'm, well, I'm up here trying to stop their latest one. There's some, um, school club. They do a tabletop game, I think. And, um, well, today they're meant to be doing a recruiting activity. You know, they've got a stall, they're, they're dressed up in their... Impressive, but admittedly strange costumes. Well, one of the cheerleaders suggested, wouldn't it be interesting if something went wrong? And they, they were planning on having Brad up here, armed with paint cans, and they were going to wait until the stall was underway and all the members had brought all of their stationery and, and put on their expensive and intricate costumes and they were going to, um, they were going to cover them in paint, they were going to ruin all their hard work. Don't get me wrong, although I find that kind of stuff a little bit weird, and whilst this tabletop stuff really isn't my cup of tea, I know that I don't have a right to tell people how to live their lives, no more than you have any right to tell me how to live mine. And I tried explaining that to them, and um, They laughed. And it's made me extremely saddened to see people that I once thought of as friends treat scarring people, traumatizing them, to see them treating that with with laughter, like it's like it's jovial, like it's just a, a prank and it won't do any damage to their to their confidence. Especially what with with everything else going on and, and they're probably getting it from their parents too. I mean we all know how old people are. I mean hell, my old man 
when I said that, that I wanted to get into gymnastics. Oh, oh, no, 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 it had to be football. I couldn't imagine what that generation of parent would do if anyone had, you know, a more unorthodox hobby like that. And I mean, the last thing that, that, that we should do is make their lives here hell when they're obviously comfortable enough here to start a club, so all the power to them. And so I came to um, to get rid of the trap. And um, also to well, to look over them, you know, the, the, the club, make sure that they could have their day uninterrupted, you know. But then I ran into you. And now, after seeing how cruel my friends can be, I'm really worried to hear what they've said to you. So come on. Tell me what happened. Pinky promised this does not leave this roof, okay? Anything you tell me stays between us. What happened? Are you kidding me? <sighs> Honestly. Bloody children, a lot of them. But look, I don't want anything that they've said or done to put you into your shell. I don't want you to tone down one iota of your personality. Alright? In a few years, months maybe, these people will become as non-existent to you as people that you haven't met yet. Alright? They are temporary annoyances in your life. And when you go on to do better and greater things and surround yourself with like-minded people, you'll wonder why you even gave a second's thought to those mindless idiots. Look. I know that what I said around the campfire shows that, that, that I'm pretty biased, but I think you're really great. And I will say that again and again and again and again and again and again. You get the point. I will say it until it sinks in. You're awesome. And I don't want you to, to change or, or to hide who you are in some attempt of, of self-preservation, because you don't have to do that. Because I know for one, that I would much rather spend time with you than anyone else in this bloody place. Much more than those idiots that I once called friends. And then, um, after the day I've had, and the realizations that, that I've made, well, I think I might do just that. Yeah, I'm done. If, if this is what that group wants to do, if, if this is how they want people to feel, then I don't want any part of it. After all, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with, and, um... Well, I'd much rather surround myself with people like you. <laughs> You're sweet, but, um... I wouldn't call myself a good person. I've, I've, I've been complacent with a lot of their behaviour. And, um... I have some making up to do, some 
atonement. But one day, one day I might be as good as you. But you need to promise me something. Promise me that you will be who you are and say what you feel. Because those who mind don't matter. And those who matter don't mind. Well, look, this has been fun, but we should probably get off this roof before the janitor locks the doors. Uh, oh, the, the paint trap, right, yes. Um, okay, well, look, you can head downstairs and I'll dismantle the trap and then I'll come there and meet you. The only question is... What do I do with the paint cans? I mean, I suppose I could just leave them. If the janitor gets his hands on them, then they'll be put to good use. But... I might have a better use for them. Maybe... We can give the jocks and cheerleaders a taste of their own medicine. I mean, we've tried explaining why what they're doing is wrong. Maybe we need to show them. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. I wouldn't dare drag you into this. I'll do this and take whatever repercussions come from this alone. Call it... Atonement. <laughs> now, go on. Get going. And if you ever feel low again, or... you can't stop thinking about what they said to you... Give me a call. Oh, don't worry about that. I put a scrap of paper with my number on it in your bag when you weren't looking. You're awfully oblivious when you're crying. <laughs> now, go on. Get. I've got to dismantle this trap before the club gets here. 